Okay, I'm, today I'm going to go over how to do a little bit more complex retirement problem. And this problem comes from this, this textbook right here. It's a very good textbook. It's called Principles of Finance with Excel. It was written by Simon Beninga. This is a gentleman, uh, a professor of finance from Israel. He recently passed away, but this is still a very good book. Um, co-authored by another gentleman uh, by the name of Tal. I'm not I'm not sure, but I've met this guy before at a conference. A uh, very sharp guy, and I've used a lot of his textbooks before in other classes. So, <clears throat> anyway, this is this problem was taken from there, and uh, it was on page 45 of that textbook. <clears throat> and this is. Part of some of the stuff is this, the statement of the problem was not is on other pages, but this is the gist of the problem. It says Joe is 20 today and he wishes to start saving so that when he's 65 he can have 20 years of $100,000 annual draws. And uh, so I, I did this given information. You're going to start depositing on his 20th birthday. He's going to start withdrawing on his 61st birthday, and at that point he's going to make 20. 65th birthday, and at that point he's going to make 20 years of withdrawals of $100,000. During that time, he's going to earn 8% on his money. So, um, so if you do a cash flow diagram, I'm going to go in here, and uh, I want to have this thick of a border. I'm going to draw a border, and let's just say we'll just go like this a few times. And then uh, after a while, he's going to be making some withdrawals. So let's just say, uh, we'll go like this. Skip one. And uh, I'm going to hit escape. So let's just say this is his 19th birthday. <coughs> he's going to start at 19. And we're going to go 20, 21. 22, and then go dot, 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 a couple of spaces, and this will be his 63rd and 64th birthday, and finally on his 65th birthday, and 66th birthday, and dot, dot, dot. And I guess this would be the uh, <clears throat> 83rd and 84th birthday, something like that. All right. And uh, these withdrawals are the ones that we want to know. So I want to know how much this one is, how much this one is, how much this one is. These are all the same. And we know all these. Are a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's right. Because eighty four minus sixty five would be twenty. Okay, plus one. Have you had <coughs> you start out at zero, right? If I go f use your hands, your thumb is five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, yeah, so that should work. You'd think that'd be 85, but it's not. It's 84. All right, so these are the payments. How much How much should his annual payment, starting his 20th year all the way to his 64th year, how much would that have to be in order to do 20 payments out here of 100? Or get, get 20 withdrawals at $100,000, where R is 8%. <clears throat> your cost is eight per, he's making 8% of his money. <clears throat> okay, so the reason this is complicated is because you have two cash flows. You have a cash flow here and you have a cash flow here. Now, the reason I started with 19 because I wanted to do a normally nor, an ordinary annuity. So instead of, so I saying on his 20th birthday, but I'm just going to start at 19. So we have an ordinary annuity. And then this one starts, and then this is an ordinary annuity, this part. And we can collapse this back and find, we can find the present value of this, which would be the future value of this cash flow. 
So let's make a sense in a second here. So what we're going to do, we would say age, age, age when starting to save. And we're going to start out with 20. And we're going to say payment needed at that age. Okay. And let me highlight these. I'll just say wrap text. Okay, so um, so what I want to do, first I need to, I'm going to set this up since I want a payment, right? So I'm going to say equals payment, and the rate is 8%. Now eventually I want to copy this down and try some other ages when he starts. So I'm going to hit F4. Okay, I'm going to have to hit, uh, uh, okay, F4. And F4 makes that so when I copy this formula down, it doesn't go down to here, down to here, down to here. It makes it what's called an absolute reference. And the number of periods is going to be um, here. And I'm going to hit F4 to that. Minus is age when he starts, which is right here. Now, since I'm going to copy this down, I'm going to let that move because I might want to put 22 here, 24 here. So I want that to move, so that doesn't have to be absolute. But this has to be absolute because I don't want it to move when I copy it down. And then we get to add one. One year. Okay? And uh, so that's the number of periods. And the present value is zero, so I'm going to skip it. And the future value is going to be, okay, so I want to take these cash flows out here and I want to take them to a present value right here on the, on the 64th birthday. So I go present value and the rate is again 8% and I want to F4 that again to make it absolute. Number of periods now is, well, it's going to be 20 years. We could do the calculation 84 minus 65 plus 1, right? But uh, we'll just put 20 in here because we're going to leave that as 20. Um, <clears throat> or I could just click on this 20 up here <clears throat> and hit F4. And the payment now, now I want this to be, remember Excel, I want this to be a positive value, so I want to make the 100,000 a negative, so I'm going to go negative, whoop, negative, hundred thousand dollars per year. I'm going to F4 that again. Make that absolute. And the future value is going to be zero. And we can just close that. And then uh, and then also close that because the type, they're ordinary annuities. And then, so I'm going to get an answer here. And it's going to be a negative answer. And since we want that negative be, answer to be positive just because it looks nicer. Uh, it should be negative, right, because this is coming out of our pocket. But since we want the answer positive, I'm going to put a negative sign in front of that. So you would have to make payments, 45 years of payments of $2,540.23 at the start of age 20 all the way to the sixth through, and it's 20th birthday all the way to your 61st birthday in order to get 20 years of $100,000 payments at 8%. Okay. Let me put the formula in here. I'm going to go equals formula text. Okay. So now we might say, well, what if, what if he starts later? What if we'll say we'll do it like every two years? Okay. So I'm going to take that down to his 50th year. And we could copy this down. And I'm going to, these dollar signs here means it's not wide enough. So I can, I'm going to go ahead and double click here. And that just shows how much you should be paying all these other years. Okay, so we can go back to the, if you go back to the book, that should be the same answer as you have in the book on page 45. Oop, control Z. I want to copy that down a couple times. All right, so, now there, so if he starts at 50, he would have to do, he'd have 15 payments of 36159 so if you start younger, that's why I always say when you save younger, you're gonna it's a lot better, right? 
Can you imagine if he would have, you know, saved even more when he started younger? He would really. So this is how much this is how much he would have done at his 50th birthday. He would have had to pay 15 payments up to a 64th birthday of 36,159.79. So we could graph this just to kind of see. So I could uh, I could highlight this. And uh, I'm going to go insert, and we'll do a scatter plot with a line. And then we don't need we don't need uh, zero through twenty, so I'm going to make this starting at twenty, and only going to age fifty. Okay, the way I did it, I just clicked on the scale, and it comes up. And you can change the minimum, maximum. And we could change this payment payment needed at that age. Well, I'm not going to make that. I think you should understand. Um, this is the age you start saving along the bottom. Let me put that in here. We can go up here to add chart element, axis titles, primary, horizontal. And this would be age started saving. And this one, we can go add chart element, axis title, primary vertical. And this one, we can say amount per year required to withdraw. A hundred thousand. Per year or 20 years at 65th starting starting 65th birthday okay and this is so I guess call this retirement problem or something And of course, this depends on the. Now, the nice way we did this, we could say, well, what if I earn six percent of my money? It changes things, right? So, or what if I earn better? What if I earn ten percent? So you'd require less, right? So it kind of depends on when you earn money. And the way we set this up, this is the beauty of Excel. You can do what if analysis. So anyway, this is a little bit complicated. Hopefully, that makes sense. So what we did, we collapse, we 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 collapse this into a future value but since but since uh, looking at just by itself it's a present value so that's where this part of the formula comes from okay so that's a, they're taking this and making it a present value which is a first a future value to this cash flow and I had to flip it around but I had to make this this payment here negative to flip this around to make it positive up here and then and then it's just a payment and then I put a negative sign to make these answers negative and positive instead of negative so hopefully that kind of makes sense. That's kind of a complicated problem. That just shows with Excel. If you think about how you're doing the problem, uh, you can easily uh, solve a complex problem. Um, and it's a little bit hard to understand what was going on in the book. So hopefully that helps out. And uh, one other thing is if, if you uh, like this video, please subscribe. Uh, click on my picture. I'm going to put my picture up here at the end. And uh, please subscribe. That helps me out. Uh, and thank you very much.